Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, March 1st, 2018. I want to do uh, another update on the markets, but this time it'll be a little bit, some more of the same, but something different. Uh, if you follow the site for a while, you know one of the things that I like to do from time to time if I uh, am, am really trying to get an idea on where a sector or the broad markets are heading is to dig down and take a look at the charts, not only of that sector or index, in this case we're looking at the broad markets, uh, but I also like to look at the top components and to kind of give uh, additional clues on, on where the tr uh, next direction might be. So we're, we're going to do that in this video, a quick recap of what's happened recently uh, and what, what my primary scenario is. Uh, I'll start here with the 60 minute charts on the SPY. Um, and before I do that, I'll just say right now, my convictions aren't that strong. I mentioned somebody asked in the trading room today, uh, we had closed yesterday on this, this support level here, former support, and asked if that's a good place to go long. I said, yeah, I didn't think so. Um, you know, there were, we're still seeing these 60 minute divergences played out, play out. Um, talking about this divergent high that we had here. I can say my convictions were very strong here when all those trend lines broke. We were watching those for weeks. And, you know, I clearly stated in advance, you know, we need to see all three indexes break. The, you know, the Dow, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ one. And all the, those are the three major large cap indexes. Uh, they all broke. And, of course, uh, this is a scenario I was looking for here. An undercut of low, so that played out. So the, my convictions were strong to go long here and to be short here, um, but not so much. And, and I mentioned this in the trading room or possibly in one of the videos that I clo personally closed out my index longs when this second target was hit. Um, uh, and, and that's largely because the risk reward that's, well, many reasons. Number one, I thought we had come up a little too much too fast and we're due for some consolidation. And that is what has happened. So this, this mark can still break either way, but you can see it's been a grind, back and forth grind so far. I like to try to sidestep these when I see them coming. If you're a super active and nimble trader and you want to day trade the, you know, E-mini futures off the five minute charts or one minute charts, 15 minute charts, great but for most people who follow this site they're swing traders or longer term trend traders this is a kind of chop fest you want to step aside it'll just grind you to pieces so that's what's happened um i am still slightly leaning towards my scenario or i'm leaning towards that scenario of a thrust up to new highs before we take out these these recent lows in the market that remains my my preferred scenario but again my convictions aren't super high so i'm not positioned at this point long i may I may step in here, uh, as I said before, if we get down to this resistance support zone in SPY. But if we break and close below there, uh, that's not going to be good. And that, that will, in my opinion, uh, increase the odds considerably that we can go on and take out those uh, those lows back from, I think it was February 9th. All right, so that's that's a 60-minute chart again. I favor a little more downside in the near term right now. We're testing, you can see a little bit of support right here where we had a couple reaction lows the other day. So we're we're sort of testing that support. And uh, like I said, I favor a little more downside into this support zone. We'll see what happens from there, another thrust up. But again, most importantly, I wanna go over the developments on the lead market leading stocks. And I'll do that after just touching on QQQ. QQQ is uh, has a higher beta than the S&P 500, meaning it tends to go up more than the S&P 500 when the, when the market's going up, and it tends to fall more when it goes down. Uh, so a lot of traders like to trade that, uh, you know, for the extra juice, we'll call it. Um, but you can see these are the levels that I've highlighted recently. 164, we'll call that 164.70. We'll round off. You don't have to be the exact penny. 163. So this is a support zone, and it's comparable to that support zone on SPY that I just showed you. That's my preferred scenario. This is where I I may be interested, and again, maybe. Let's see what happens. See how the intraday charts look when we get there. Uh, I may be interested in stepping in and buying some longs when we get there for that scenario of. Uh, a, a, a new high, a marginal new high in the markets before the next uh, swing short setup. Um, so let's take a look at the individual stocks now. I'm not going to use QQQ because QQQ, like I often say, is basically a tech fund with an Amazon kicker. It's so top heavy in technology. So 
to get an idea of the overall health of the stock market, we look at the S&P 500, and uh, I'm using SPY, the tracking ETF here. So what you're looking at, this list of related items shows all the components. There's 503 stocks in the S&P 500 right now. Uh, I have them sorted by market cap. Uh, it's a cap-weighted index, so it's a QQQ, so these top components give a higher weighting. In other words, they have a bigger impact on the index. So we're only going to look at just a handful, maybe top 10 or top dozen or so. And that will give us an idea of how the charts look. Let's start out with the 800-pound uh, gorilla in the room, Apple. Um, what I've done here, if you followed the site for a while, back in January, right about the time just before the markets broke down and Apple, uh, I put up a chart here highlighting this bearish rising wedge pattern, this trend line. Apple was approaching that level. I mentioned that they probably wouldn't break down until after they reported earnings, but I expected a breakdown, and that's exactly what happened. So we had a divergent high. It was priced into the charts that sooner or later this trend line would break. We had a divergent high right there. We had negative divergence. I could draw it out this way. I had the lines at that point right here. Uh, there was the divergent high. Uh, sure enough, they reported the trend line broke uh, either just before or just after, but then that's when the impulsive selling kicked in. Uh, so what's happened since then? We all know that you know the, the breakdown did occur, but you can see as I extend that trend line, we have just made a perfect back test. I mean, textbook of that trend line. And again, it's a pretty well-defined trend line, a lot of reactions along the way. It starts here off the late 2016 lows. And you can see what's happened let me try to drag it here. You can see what's happened in the last couple of days. We hit it back, uh, what was that, Monday? Yeah, Monday of this week. We stopped there at the highs. Uh, we had one, two uh, other failed attempts, e even intraday breaks. But as I always say, it's all that matters on the daily time frame is how you close. So both times we failed to close above it, and now we're rolling over. So this, again, guys, is very simple, straightforward, and technical analysis. This is a breakdown of a large bearish rising wedge pattern with very large, long building negative divergences, a kickback rally, and now uh, uh, you know, a successful back test. We, you know, we hit it, but rolling over. So in other words, we failed there, I should say, at the, uh, at the trend line. Uh, that doesn't look good. Uh, is all, is it over for Apple? Uh, not not really. If you're bullish on Apple and you're bullish on the stock market, and if my scenario of new highs in the markets before those lows from February 9th get taken out, talking about these lows, if that plays out, which like I said, I'm still leaning towards, um, this is, I think would be a, a nice buy point for Apple here. It's about 169. You can see very well-defined support, a lot of reactions there. Uh, so this would be, if you are bullish on the markets, even if you're not, if you're just a trader and you're looking for an objective trade, uh, given the longer term outlook for Apple is not good right now, especially after this breakdown and back test, but the swing trading is all about capturing these rips and dips. And these are very profitable moves if you can position for them. So um, again, we'll have to see how the charts look when we get there, but going long there around that on an approach to that 169 level, maybe you want to jump in a little early in case it reverses. Um, with a stop somewhat below, not too far below, is objective because you'd be risking, you know, a buck, buck and a half, two bucks, whatever you want to put your stop at to make, uh, you know, 169 up to, you know, new highs take you probably above 185, depends where we go. Uh, so that's that's the bullish case for Apple. If it breaks that level, especially impulsively or in a daily closing basis, you can see my additional price targets. These are all levels. You know, and ultimately Apple, I think, works its way down back here to the 142 level sometime this year. Um, maybe sooner, maybe later. Hard to say right now, but I'm just showing you that this is not good. I don't like to see that. Uh, Alphabet, G-O-O-G-L. There's two share classes. A story on that. Another one with a big divergent high. These are the things I look for for positioning for swing trades. However, Apple, although it did put in a divergent high and it did have a correction, Remember, there's a very high correlation among all these top components because there's so much indexing now in the markets. That's been the trend for the last 10 years or more, a move away from managed funds, meaning where the, the mutual fund manager does good old fashioned stock picking, you know, picking the best looking stocks, selling or shorting those that don't. And the, you know, the public has moved away from that into index investing. So what happens there, it's great when the market's rising, you have money going into the S&P 500 index funds, uh, QQQ, all those. 
Uh, but it works in reverse when there's outflows. Um, because when those funds get sold, they have to rebalance, they have to take out, and you're going to have, you're going to see that spill over, especially into these top components that have a very high correlation with the index. So uh, here's Alphabet. There was a divergent high. Again, uh, the positive on this one is that it held trend. There's this trend line goes to the left of the chart. This trend line goes back a long way. It's a very well defined trend line in Alphabet. And as I mentioned at the time, didn't matter what happened intraday or these little brief breaks. We had both horizontal price support right here. You can see very well defined support zone and trend line support and Alphabet held. Uh, so, you know, that's. I'm giving you, you know, some bearish charts and some bullish charts here. This is, I haven't seen this in a long time. So Apple, I wouldn't buy Apple right now uh, unless it hits that level, like I said, and then maybe for a bounce trade, but the longer term chart doesn't look great. Alphabet, the longer term chart doesn't look great either. Um, but so far we haven't broken trend. And if we break trend, then look for a break of this support in these recent lows. This is this would be very bad to see Apple down below the, and you know below this level here. But it, I'm sorry, Alphabet. If I didn't say that, I might have said Apple. But until then, that's the chart. You can see these little micro support levels here along the way. So there's quite a bit of support, and I'm still slightly leaning towards that scenario. Like I said, in the market of maybe a little more downside, followed by another thrust up, and then the next objective and potentially very profitable uh, time to put on some swing shorts. All right, so that's Alphabet, Class A, same story with Class B. You can see uh, the charts are almost identical. Same company, just different share classes. You know, they had a partial backfill. They entered the gap. When I'm talking about gaps, you can see a big gap right here. There's the top, there's the bottom of the gap, and we got about halfway through and then turned down. But again, um, longer term, we don't have any technical damage in the charts, um, but there, I'm seeing some things I don't like, such as, um, if you followed me for a while, you know, I like to use this PPO signal line, the 9 EMA is a trend indicator. When it's above zero, the trend is bullish, it crossed above here, it stayed above till this point, and it's back testing that zero line right now from below. Again, I'm talking about the white line, not the blue line. So that's not good. A lot of mixed signals in the market. And again, you know, my view is almost that if we buy this dip here, uh, a little more downside I see. If we can step in the next week or so, there may be a, a long trade that could last for a week or two, a couple weeks. Um, but it, in the bigger picture, it, if you're a longer term investor, it's a little bit like picking up nickels in front of a steamroller because I do see more downside coming this year. All right. So uh, and, and again, that downside, if, if, if I'm wrong, we don't turn around soon if these support levels the near-term support levels don't hold we break all these support levels on on these long-term trend lines especially on the broad markets I'll, I'll wrap up with those uh, not good not good at all all right this is Amazon um, this one played out uh, a lot like the scenario that I was calling for in the broad market so what we had here and again it's a you know it's a great company but again overbought Overowned, overloved, you know, high P ratio, all that stuff, high valuations. But it did have that initial thrust down or had it along with the market. Uh, remember, it will move in sympathy because it's a top component of the S&P 500 as well as the NASDAQ 100. Um, and it went on to actually take out the previous high. So this is, you know, that's that scenario I had laid out for the broad markets. Go out, make a marginal new high, put in a divergent high. This one I don't like. Um, because of that now we have that negative divergence it's confirmed it's clean divergence meaning that we had nice separation between the lines here much more so than this divergence back here there was very little separation uh, in fact the rsi made a slightly higher high and it still led to a correction but a small one here we had negative divergence and it led to a larger correction uh more so in, in time than in price but but certainly in price that was a drop from about i don't know it's, it's a log scaling here so about 11 12 1300 all the way down to roughly 940 it was a pretty pretty sizable drop and it, it lasted for months uh but this time around i think there's a bigger drop coming uh so there's another one i'm not so hot about microsoft um again same story uh, this one is above trend. I have two alternative trend lines here, both of which are still very much intact right now. So this is why I can't, you know, give an all out sell signal, swing, sell, 
you know, get out of your 401k money yet because we haven't seen these trend lines broken. And as many times in recent years as it looked like this bull market may give way, uh, we just haven't seen that. Um, so uh, we need to see, like I said, the indexes go in the majority, not all, but the vast majority of these leading stocks. And Microsoft has a way to go. But uh, here's the thing. The chart's ugly. We had a divergent high right here. You can see the negative divergence down below. Uh, yes, that divergence did play out, as it often does, for a correction. Uh, we hit trend line support, bounced. And it also, as with Amazon, made a marginal new high, put in another divergent high, and even steeper divergence right here. You can see it. So that one doesn't look good either. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is, although the markets didn't play, QQQ almost matched its previous highs. So the NASDAQ 100 almost hit it fell just shy so far s p is still fairly you know i think it was about 70 percent up retraced about 70 percent of the previous drop um so maybe that scenario of new highs doesn't play out because so many individual leading stocks have already done it they've already had those marginal new highs and uh, again this is what i'm trying to convey in this video is that uh, i'm not liking the charts on a lot of these individual stocks here so that uh, may affect um let's just say it it let's just say it decreases my confidence, which would, wasn't super high before in in the fact that we go on and make new highs before the market rolls over. That's probably the best way to say it. Uh, Facebook, here's another one, clean technicals. That's what the thing about these charts, especially when you have uh, a lot of volatility picking up, technicals work so much better. Uh, you have a breakdown of a very well-defined trend line. In a back test, yeah, we got above it one day, but then fell back below. And that's that's not unusual, as long as we're not up there three, four, five days a week, well above it. So that's just basically a breakdown in a back test. Um, but again, there's a lot of cross currents here. So I'm not trying to give you wishy-washy analysis. Uh, I'm just telling you my conviction's not super strong. We're at support. So yeah, breakdown and back test, you know, it, it certainly was an objective short entry on the back test. But you have support here and there was the support level is very well defined it goes back um all the way until july it capped uh, all the advances back here from uh july all the way up until uh november almost november so there it is and uh if we go you know this is a chart i posted before we even had this this recent correction uh you know put a you know i've showed you the divergent highs in the past and i've measured out what the corrections were and I made mention that this most recent divergent high is bigger than all these other previous divergent highs. So this is where I have, I see Facebook going sometime in 2018, um, could be sooner than later. So there's another one I'm not so hot on, but again, hard to bet the farm on it uh, on the short side right now. Now we get away into some of the financials here and then we'll wrap it up. There's I'm going down the line again in descending uh, order of market cap. So we're on Berkshire class B. Uh, what do I see there? Uh, the indicators are kind of whippy and don't tell me a whole lot, but I do see a, a pretty well-defined support level right here at about 200, 260, uh, 264 cents is where that line is marked. So give or take, uh, we had a price channel here. It was pretty well-defined and a, uh, you know, uptrend line here. So this was our price channel. We overshot that channel, fell back in. Uh, and again, it's just amazing how well technical analysis works. This was a trend line I had here in advance of this sell-off. And that's why I got bullish at the lows because so many stocks had fallen to trend line support or other key support levels or moving averages. So we got a bounce. Now the million dollar question, is that bounce over or not? Um, well, we'll know soon. So I still think there's a little downside in the very least after about another percent or so downside in the market to those levels I showed you on QQQ, those target, the support zones and SPY and all the other stocks I've covered recently, including Berkshire. I think there's a little more downside in the very least of a little bounce play, bounce trade where you, if you're a you know quick trader and you want to get a one, two, three percent bounce off the market, you can get that with the possibility for more before we go on to break down from these primary uptrend lines. So there's Berkshire. We're going to wrap it up in four more stocks. Just wanted to kind of cover some different sectors. Uh, Berkshire, obviously a financial, big, mostly financial company. Uh, here's JP Morgan. Uh, you can see all these little trend lines here. We had a break of this trend line back test. Um, what this shows, this big line here, and this is what stands out to me. And 
this is what speaks to the longer term. I always talk about near term, intermediate, long term outlooks. These are huge divergences. They show through on the weekly chart. This, these, this negative divergence spans the entire year, actually late 2016, all the way into early 2018. So over a year of negative divergences, big powerful divergences. And as I often say, the uh, corrections or rallies on a stock are typically, not always, but typically commensurate or in line with the scope of the divergences. So what I mean by that? Well, right here we had a divergent high. You can see these negative divergences I had marked. And sure enough, JP Morgan had a healthy correction. Might not look like much on this log scaling, but we went from about $97, somewhere around there, all the way down to 84 or so, 83. Um, this is a much more powerful divergent high. And we broke down recently and we back tested this trend line right here. So there's another one not looking so hot. J&J, uh, well, took out support since I started this video. It was above support. This is a pretty fairly significant support level here. It's been sliced through recently, but a lot of that happened because we had some impulsive selling. Um, and you can see I don't have a whole lot of support on that one till all the way down here at about 120. And we're at 127 now, so that'd be a good you know, 5 6% drop. Bank America, BAC, this one's still above trendline support. It, uh, there was a little bit of a temporary breakdown uh, during the recent correction, but it's up above trend. And again, just to you know continue what I'm saying here is this this is why uh, I'm not ready to go aggressively short for a swing trade. This is why I'm not putting those on official as official trades on the site right now. Too many key stocks still at or just above pretty significant support levels and most importantly, above their primary trend lines. All right, XOM. Uh, we really have to go to the weekly chart and I'll, I'll leave it here. We'll wrap up with XOM. Uh, this is a pretty, you know, these are all different support now resistance levels. Of course, if a line is above current prices, that's resistance. If it's below, it's support. So I see a support level here around 74. We just recently tested on the, on that last uh, sell off and we're still above there. You can see reactions here. That level contained most of these pullbacks, other than some intra-week, remember on a weekly chart, intra-week breakdowns, contain this pullback right here, contained all these advances here. So this is where the trend lines come from. They're not just arbitrary or randomly placed. You know, there's there's rhyme and uh, reason behind those. Uh, so that's it, guys. There it is. Um, bigger picture. Not looking so great, but uh, define your trading style, your time horizon. If you're an active trader, uh, here we go. We're now at the top of my support zone. So um, this is where I mentioned you can step in and buy from anywhere from this point down to the bottom with a stop not too far below. Uh, you probably want to give that stop at minimum a 60 minute closing basis. In other words, allow that 60 minute candlestick to finalize. Or if not, at least uh, if you can do a daily, if you can allow yourself a little extra room, a daily stop. And what I do with a daily stop is I'll just, you know, if it's 359, the market's about to close and we're well above that level, sell it then. Uh, or you can always sell an aftermarket trading. Spy is liquid, but I usually like to close the position out at the end of the day if, it, if it's below my uh, stop level that's based on a daily close. I do that because if you don't sell it in after hours trading, you can miss a gap. You can be stuck in the position with a gap down the following day that, that further extends your losses. So that's what I mean by a daily closing stop on a daily closing basis. So there it is. So uh, you want to know what I think is going to happen? I not, wouldn't bet the farm on it, but I'm ready to uh, probably add some long exposure. I'll probably take maybe a starter position here today. Uh, take, bring that, add that up, double up if we get down to the bottom of the zone with a stop not far below, um, maybe a little bit lower than that, uh, and look for, you know, at minimum a bounce trade to those this this area here. I think probably right here would be uh, an ideal target. So if you want to know targets, we'll call this T1 right here, right around that level. It's between 275 and 276, somewhere around there. Um, and uh, I'm still open and slightly leaning towards that possibility um, of a, a marginal new high. This is still my preferred scenario at this point in time. Um, if, we, if we take out and close and move impulsively below this that level, um, that, yeah, that's going to change. So uh, I'll follow up and we'll, we'll take a look at, uh, you know, 
we'll take a look at things if and when that happens. But as of now, this is what I'm looking for, a reversal there. And I should probably just wrap the video telling you that, you know, when you're really trying to hone down an exit for, you know, short-term trade, you could go down. I like to go down to as low as the five-minute charts. And you can see here we have potential divergence. So this is why, as I wrap this video up right now, I'm going to take a starter position in SPY uh, for a potential bounce rally into the close today. And I'll add to that position and even take it home if I see these this uh, a, a bullish crossover on the MACD here on this five minute chart that'll put in positive divergence. And then that that tends to go out, you know, it'll, the divergence or the charts will start to firm up out on these longer term time frames. So uh, there it is, near term outlook for the markets and the intermediate term as well as the long term for that matter. But remember, we're still above trend and that's why I don't have any uh, broad market swing shorts, but if you're an active trader, that's why I do these videos. These are unofficial trade ideas. Trade the market as you want. They're just too quick for most traders that uh, you know don't want to go long today, close it tomorrow, that kind of thing. All right, this has been Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.